Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful, empowered harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in on a great viewer question a little bit more in depth, and that is to discuss the dynamic of a relationship with a narcissist or a psychopath, and then the instilling or creation and really developing and nurturing um, the presence of insecurity, fear, and doubt in the relationship with who is their supply, the person who they've sort of targeted or, you know, sort of utilize as essentially what can be like a dumping ground um, for their own emotional insecurities. So people end up absorbing a lot of negative energy from these types of relationship dynamics, absorbing negative people's energy, <clears throat> particularly <clears throat> Excuse me. People who have a high degree of empathy, sensitivity, a big heart, um, are you know those who are very sensitive to the needs and trials, tribulations, and challenges of another. In other words, they want to see this person win. They want to help them out. They want to be there for them. They have a feel-good feeling, knowing that they're a good friend, a good parent a good daughter, a good son, a good co colleague, a good coworker, a good business owner. They feel good. They feel at their best when, you know, they're helping another. And so this can really work, uh, you know, not in their favor, especially when they are in a relationship or find themselves in a series of relationships with people who are manipulative, controlling, who might be really very extremely self-centered or have a pathological sense of self-importance, meaning that they will, they want what they want, you know, no matter what it takes, who it hurts, who they um, lie to, who they upset, who they hide the truth from, they just, it does not bother them. They feel a sense of, or degree of entitlement, this is how life is, you know, this is the good stuff or whatever it is. This is what we work for, this is what we play for, this is what we live for. They will have their reason for being the way that they are. And absolutely unequivocally, they have a right to be who they are. Um, this is not about saying you cannot be who you are. Absolutely, positively, um, that is who it is, why it is. But however, those individuals who are in relationship with these individuals for some degree of time might take on a, a sort of a, a codependent or maladaptive um, personality trait or, you know, that's been rememorized and rehearsed for so long that it becomes part of their I, I am. So, you know, thoughts re recurring, you know, create an emotion which creates a, mo a mood, which creates a temperament, which then will create an, uh, an identity. Um, oftentimes, if it's based on that of coping, that person will then have a lot of coping mechanisms if their needs aren't being met. So we need to understand that the narcissist and without a doubt the psychopath, they will create and maintain a very specific dynamic, one where they have dominance, leverage, power or control or influence over the other, and essentially to a hyper degree, rendering the other person ineffectual or feeling ineffectual, not able to do for themselves, speak for themselves, be for themselves, become for themselves or realize their full potential for themselves because there is a, a sort of a, a hindering or a keeping down of others so that they don't rise to the level what which then threatens the narcissist with equality. Now realize that in order for someone to really feel threatened by the success of another or even the negative statements of another, in other words, if someone tells you you've done a very bad job, would you feel bad or would you know that you did a good job? You know, so, but, so you have to understand that the, the um, insults to the injury um, will, are oftentimes um, based, uh, will, will be um, identified with um, sort of making another vulnerable. In other words, um, um, exploiting their insecurities, exploiting their vulnerabilities exploiting what they don't feel strong as of yet, but they will just, you know, knock it down before it has a chance to grow or become. So, in other words, 
they do this so that they can render another helpless or less informed um, and they are then threatened by their becoming equal because they personally within themselves have an insecurity with their own accomplishments, their own achievements. So then when they, if they see another succeed, uh, amen, you know, thank God that worked out. Or if, you, if there's this other person who is the target, then begins to rise up or do for themselves or attention. This is then interpreted as a threat. So normal growth and development and, you know, discussion or communication of feelings, opinions, desires, goals, ambition, if it's not in alignment or matching with the narcissist where they feel a sort of superior sense of their, their goals are more special, their uh, talents are more special, their, you know, their car is more special, their shoes are more special. I mean, everything is always going to be more than, you know, so that's what they're going for. That's their apparatus motorandi. That is what propels them. And so that, and so it is, they have the right to be this way. And so it is, you know, and, and, and so it's an allowing of, of them to be this way, but it does not mean that you have to take, you know, you don't have to be, um, sort of, you know, the kick the dog syndrome. You don't have to be, um, treated with false accusations. You don't have to have, um, projection of the insecurity of the narcissist in your inner dwelling in your center which is usually why it gets off center because it it hits in the gut and in the heart so it's to remember that the the center of you your I am is your heart so it's to remember this that the heart is one of the first systems that is developed in the embryo it, it, it feeds and provides nurturing nur nourishment and you know to the rest of the developing organ system so there you know, but the heart is your center. Not a lot of people talk about that, pay attention to it. Maybe you disagree, that, that is completely fine. But your, your heart, you know, is also then connected, directly connected with your emotions. So your emotions will then be on an automatic pilot if they are rehearsed frequently enough. So, you know, a few feelings repeated over a couple of days, you know, can become a mood. You know, a mood then, you know, maintained over a period of time can become a temperament. And a temperament, you know, com continued over time can become an identity or a very strong personality trait. And, and this also, you know, becomes a dynamic to understand with what, you know, the narcissist would consider their supply, um, the person who they are close to. They might have also, you know, second and third supply. But I think for a lot of our viewers here, they have, you know, definitely been in that position where they have made, been made... Um, to be to feel um, bad about themselves. They have been made to feel ashamed. They have been made to feel inadequate. They have been made to feel stupid. They have been made to feel irrelevant. They have been made to feel that they're um, not important, not worth the time of day, not worth their salt, not worth, you know, the ground that they're standing on. I mean, they will make you feel as if you know, you don't matter. That is the vibe that they put out. But to understand that the, um, the individual who has a high degree of empathy and finding themselves in this dynamic will be more prone or more apt to take the false criticism, the shaming comments, um, the demeaning tone, the belittling at face value. So in, in other words, identifying it with as a par permanent part of themselves, which couldn't be further from the, 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 the truth. So then the, the problem with those individuals who find themselves um, inextricably tied, um, you know, either in a marriage, a family, a job, a community, um, a, you know, a, a, a fiance situation, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a common law, you know, the, the problem is then that then it has been um, rememorized and rehearsed or accepted, you know, in other words, not fought up against, you know, by the individual that eventually it begins to accumulate and they begin to feel low, low self-esteem, feeling fearful, um, ang anxious. All these are stemming oftentimes from that toxic shame that is then, you know, sort of imprinted or developed and nurtured and reinforced in the supply. 
Um, why would they do this? Because deep, in, you know, within them, they are hosting and harboring of this shame within themselves or this need within themselves. So um, for them, rather than feeling safe with being equal, uh, feeling safe with the, the growth and development of others, rather than feeling safe with, you know, other people, maybe what they interpret as showing them up, doing better, um, excelling, you know, they are threatened because they want, they have an insatiable need to be that one, um, that, that one who has the talent, the money, the looks, the car, the bank account, the shoes, um, the music, whatever it is, they are the, they feel that they are the penultimate with which really they compare everybody else against. So they sort of do this as a, you know, they use their um, entitlement as a source to which to compare others. And of course, no one else will ever, you know, measure up to, to them. I mean, it's just part of their pattern. It's a very specific pattern. So the people who don't know better um, in the course of this relationship uh, might come into the relationship feeling a low sense of self-worth or feeling really great about themselves. Um, and, you know, these, both of these states can be then exploited or taken advantage of. In other words, you know, the other individual whom they uh, basically indoctrinate or have their relationship with, that, you know, they want that person to do all the giving, you know, do all the giving, all the work, all the this, and they don't, you know, have to contribute. Um, you've got that imbalance. Um, and, and so it will create an imbalance, but otherwise to, to understand, I think is what I'm trying to explain is that the insecurity then the, uh, are then interpreted by the individual as, well, you are right. You know, you are, because you're superior, because you're the authority, because you're the talent, because you've got the car, because you've got the shoes, because of whatever, whatever, you are right. That's the narcissistic sort of how they operate and how they um, create a, a dy dynamic, an unequal dynamic between those who they will, you know, have relationships with. They'll put down, you know, not talk to, um, give a snide look, um, snub you off. Um, you know, this is just um, a very common tactic, stonewalling. Um, not, you know, not responding, um, the silent treatment. And it really does begin to um, create a problem with the other's willpower or the experience of their willpower. Oftentimes, people then will then accept this as a mediocre or the way their life is going to be. They begin to accept less than they are capable of, less than their potential, less of their development, and less of their, you know, journey, development. Um, for many people because they, they don't, they're not able to understand what is going on. Um, so you, you, you need to be able to understand that this is oftentimes the tactic and um, the message that a narcissist or a psychopath will send out to others. You know, it's as if you, you don't um, exist. Uh, it becomes very, very severe um, and a lot of people get very confused and bewildered um, and very fearful of that state when they feel that they are, they don't matter, this is going to get them in trouble, um, they can't contribute to the relationship the way that they need or want to, to have, you know, um, activity, um, and then they end up, you know, it's the lose it, use it or lose it scenario where they're not using their voice, so they, they're not able to communicate, they're not using, you know, their higher order thinking, so they lose it, um, excuse me. Um, so this becomes a real paramount issue that can be very limiting and um, really hindering and, and create an instilling of insecurity in the other individual, which of course is dis not empowering. Uh, excuse me. Um, I have a tickle somehow. I don't know what that is, but um, there it goes. So they, they will create this insecurity, a sort of a shaky ground some people call it walking on eggshells is kind of the um, experience. But, you know, there is no, um, it is a one-way street with the narcissist. There is no two-way, there is no two-direction, um, you know, enabled 
Um, it is for them. It is a one directional, um, and so this, of course, causes insecurity in others because it's founded on the a fear that they are permanently not good enough, that they should be ashamed, they're not strong enough, they're not enough. You fill in the blanks. I'm sure you've heard it um, from you know the other individual, and it's feeding in a negative feeling. A, you're absorbing a negative energy and negative images, which create a, a negative impact in the subconscious which causes, causes then self-limiting beliefs and self-limiting behaviors and self-limiting conversations so you're you're under you're not giving full um you're not giving full functionality to your life because of this element so you know you've heard this before you know um they absorb you know and they're absorbing it because they don't know how to put the filter on to say that's not mine that's not mine um that's your insecurity. That's their fear. But if you're around it, it you, people, uh, the people then become enmeshed, where there is no boundary definition between the narcissist and the supply. Basically, for a narcissist, their supply is nothing more than an extension of themselves. So this becomes very difficult when you've got narcissistic parents, and then their children are just extensions of themselves. So they don't really have their own traits their own um uh, you know abilities or you know where they're at um you know they're you know this is just a, a very common a very very common situation so <clears throat> and it will create an insecurity because there's a feeling that's communicated that you don't measure up to what i you know for what i need you to be so it's all about pleasing them and how they look how they appear so to them, it's this is a very superficial um, place to to come from. You know, I'm worried you make me look bad. You know, is basically what what they're saying, which is their flawed thinking. Um, it doesn't. You know, you don't make anybody look bad. You are you know in and of yourself good enough. You have the right to be who you are, and, and not say do who you are. Be b e as in being as in to exist. <clears throat> and so there should be no shame in that. But the problem is that the narcissist will indoctrinate shame into being who you are. So oftentimes we don't see a lot of personality development in that individual because of this manipulation and the use of fear really um, and intimidation and creating and instilling a negative message which creates them, which creates, you know, a, a very inhibited mindset for that other individual which then of course they have to work to struggle and identify and become aware of so that's part of part of the piece of the puzzle we'll pick up more on the next video this is your buddy peace and harmony with you here today and i hope that these videos do help please share please subscribe and please donate for more great tools videos discussion and support Peace out, peace be with you, and have a wonderful day.